species in the world that has a jaw problem. No other animal in the world has jaw problems, so it's out of a jaw. There's also no other... Uh, now we have energy. Uh, there is no other um, species in the world that has energy problems. There's just us. Now, as I said, it's getting late. And we need a lot of energy to do this. So I will ask you to do this whole talk together with me. And uh, when you think about it, everything around here is mostly nothing. As we know from the whole models of atoms, between the little particles, there's mostly nothing on one side. And then on the other side, the question, where do I end and where does the next person, where do you start, is very, very relative. There's a little space, but there's a little bit less material, and then it continues. So we're doing this together. And uh, I want to talk about the energy that we have in ourselves. And there is a very good way of uh, experiencing that. And that's through sound. Try to feel the energy. It's amazing what sort of energy a sound can generate. So there are many, many ways of powering up. And I believe when we look at energy, not so much the energy that's outside the one that comes out of the plug and the energy we have inside, but we con consider this as one continuum then suddenly our use of the so-called renewable or non-renewable energy is completely different. Now, of course, as a side note, um, every energy is renewable. Oil, gas, coal, after two million years, it's all back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we're all going to die, we're all going to turn into oil, and the next ones. So, um, let's take a few seconds to experience your own energy. When you follow the sound until it completely disappears, you can feel it. Actually, thank you, Harold, for the, for the bell. So my daughter came home from kindergarten at the age of five and said, Daddy, do you know that the energy in the universe is constant? And uh, I thought, maybe I sent her to the wrong kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she was very impressed. So nothing gets lost. But where does the energy go? Where does our energy go? And where does the energy go that we uh, take out of a plug? or other source. We heard today where energy comes from, about alternative energy, about sustainable technologies, biomimetics, a lot about uh, symbiotics and symbiosis, about underperforming overpriced products, about biomimetics, about cavemen, and about economics, society, and what sort the a role the energy plays. Also about who owns the energy. And when you look at children, is the energy here or is the energy here? And to paraphrase Jesse's Marsh's first talk with, whom he, with which he started this morning, can we harvest the energy from the kids? Just have these wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so if this is energy for us, how does our personal energy fit in? And as I mentioned earlier, there's this about 2,000 to 3,000 year old concept that we, all, we are all connected. And most animals live that way. We just don't do it, and I believe we don't do it that moment. And <clears throat> as much as we need to get away. This is so absurd. I mean, this is 
when you look at this and I ask you, where is this? You will say, well, probably some poor country where they have to run for hours to get water, electricity, or anything. This is about a mile away from where I live in San Francisco. That's the sort of stuff they have there. This is not a, well, it's a third world country. Uh, or is this energy? If we better understand how to take advantage of this energy, and this is why I told you, I need all of you, I need all your energy to give this talk. We have to do it together. And that is, in my belief, as Nikki pointed out earlier, this is, in my belief, one of the big things about TED Talks. They're always about everybody in the room. This is not about presenting something. Or is it like that? Or is it like that? That's everywhere energy. And it's our energy. And we are very careful with what we do with this energy, much more careful than what we do with the energy that comes out of the plug. And the moment we understand, it's just one th system. You would not just uselessly run up and down the stairs if you don't have to go there. The same way you just let the light bulb burn in the other room for hours. The moment it becomes one system, all the information, everything we learned today, suddenly makes sense. And it's no longer this inconvenient, uncomfortable, ugly uh, shoe that we saw early that nobody wants. <laughs> suddenly it's something that we want. So yes, there is energy inside. I don't want to talk uh, in detail. There are many, many theories where our energy is. I believe we know very, very little. The way we deal with energy today, and that includes mental energy, our body energy, and the energy that's, if you want so, out there. We know very, very little. We poorly understand. We learned about the caveman, 100 watt, compared to the SUV, 1700 watt. 17 kilowatt, yeah? Sorry, 1700 kilowatt. So even more, huh? I beg your pardon? 177. I'm sorry, 177 uh, kilowatt. Um, but the caveman did not know about all the energy in the river that's behind his little cave. The same way we know very, very little about it the energy that's around here that we could use. We have some early experiments. And with most of these experiments, we fail. 236,000 whales were killed in the 19th century alone. What for? They cut the head off and threw away the rest. And then they drilled a hole, a man-sized hole, so one guy could climb into the head and get the waxy oil out of the head, which was the best stuff to make the most expensive, most desirable candles. So we killed whales to make candles, which is totally absurd, yeah? It's about as absurd as this, as drilling, ruining the, the groundwater, uh, getting people sick, just so we can get the oil out. It's still one of the better few things that we have. Yes, we have solar power, we have wind. It, most cars that work with wind don't work. So it is, we are about at that stage. You know? It was kerosene that actually saved the whales. A Canadian uh, chemist came up with the idea of how to make kerosene, and then they made kerosene lamps that saved the whales. And we will find, hopefully, something soon that saves us. So we're very early in this thing. In, in America, there is, uh, at the moment, even a movement that claims atomic energy is better because it's better for the environment, which, of course, is a no-go in Europe. Um, but to go back to the other arg argument, I believe that we basically have no idea. We are cavemen. Now we're sitting there, we use a little bit more energy, we use it very ineffectively. Because if you talk to the caveman, it says, come on, man, there are so many opportunities, build a little, little wheel. Yeah? And uh, 
we are about there. And when we realize that, then I think we will be able to come up with completely new energy uh, approaches. Not only how to generate, and we stop thinking about generating and using energy. Because you don't say, okay, I'm going to eat a banana now, and then I'm going to run up the stairs. That's not how it works. Yeah? We need to learn. We learned a lot today. I have to say I'm deeply impressed and uh, about all the talks I heard today. And I was asked to summarize them. I will not even attempt. Because for every single talk that you of all my co-speakers spent 18 minutes, I would spend at least an hour to try to uh, repeat what you said. We learned a lot today. We need to learn a lot more. And we just had a talk about an amazing uh, new type of ship. There's another type of ship that has been around that is not as practical, but it relies completely on wind. And uh, I can only recommend for anybody who's never sailed to experience the feeling when you actually can hold the wind, when you can hold the energy on a line in your hands. It suddenly gives you a very direct um, feeling of what energy is like. Thank you. <laughs>